You came up to Oregon for your son and you spent a lot of time at the Capitol getting to know how things work, getting to know people who are lobbying up there. Kate Brown was lobbying up there. Um, Tom Clifford. Tom Clifford. He was like someone you really kind of connected with. He he connected with me, I think. I I knocked on his door, but he said, "Come on in." And you know, and he he was feeling um, pretty anxious about the motor vehicle laws at that time because that the motor vehicle laws of Oregon were being revised in the early '80s, starting in '83, and in '85. There was this huge scam that went down. How are you doing today? <laughs> I've done better, but I I'm glad to be making this video. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think we should start from the beginning of you and your experience that brought you up to Kate Brown? Well, when I came to Oregon in 1983, it wasn't long before I met her. We were <clears throat> lobbyists simultaneously, never going at the same direction, <clears throat> going in the same direction, but... Uh, and I, I did, I mean, I thought, wow, maybe I could get next to this young lady and, and we could uh, really do some landmark work. What was Kate Brown doing at the time? What was she, she working she for? Was, she was working for NARAL, okay, I don't National Association for Abortion Rights, mm. something. And you came up here for father's rights or parents' rights, or I came up to rescue my kid uh, who was kidnapped from California from me and by the uh, district attorney from Washington County and the sheriff over there. So while you were lobbying up here, did you get to meet? any of the state legislators, any of the reps, any of the senators? Were you hanging out with any of oh, them? Yeah. Oh yeah, I had uh, a senator who was um, a chief sponsor for one of my bills. A lady named Vanderbilt that worked for legislative council who was drafting my idea into a bill. She. wrote it pretty unconstitutionally. Um, my idea was to prevent children from becoming uh, impoverished. And I, what I wanted, what I was hoping for was uh, a bill that would make it so that the parent who was most likely to keep the kid out of poverty all other things of being equal, all other things, you know, competent, parent, uh, loving, everything. Uh, but they wouldn't, they didn't want to do joint custody. The court would have to uh, make sure the child was put in the custody of the parent, most likely to keep the child out of poverty. And instead of writing that up, she said, and it hit the newspaper first, it hit the Oregonian, and then this uh, talk show, radio talk show, picked it up. I wish I could remember the name of that show now, but I can't quite get it. Uh, I got a call, and they said, you better turn on the radio and listen to this because they're talking about you. I go. So, so you you didn't write it up? 
or you had a draft of it or something and somebody I had, had a an hold idea. of it? I had an idea and it was, you know, I gave it to her in written form. Oh, okay. But it was uh, apparently not suitable bill language. And it was my first attempt. So to writing a bill or to, to actually to get a bill idea on the legislative table. assembly table. Okay. Table. Okay. And so I turned the radio on and I'm listening to these people talk about uh, what pathetic creatures Richard Koenig and this legislator that was my sponsor were for writing this bill which prohibited mothers on welfare from ever having custody of their children. And I go, what? I didn't write that. That's not my bill. How? And the interesting thing about it is that anyone who submits an idea for a bill, the first person to see the draft is the person who submitted the idea for a bill. Okay. And I didn't see it before she released it, which means she did something wrong to me, right? So, so you handed it to her because you wanted her to look at it, or you handed it to her because to draft. Oh, okay. To okay. draft into a bill, All right? And and that was something she normally does for. Oh, she, that was her job. Yeah. Oh, okay. She she was the family law drafter. And uh, so people or lobbyists who have these ideas for bills well, nor or typically would give them to her that was her job and she took it and did what with it she wrote it up such that mothers who have been on welfare can never have custody of their kids mm. and i i said i'm gonna have to check into this but that's not my bill and i quickly, you know, tried to find out what happened. And and then I told uh, Tom Clifford, the legislative counsel, her boss, I said, and, and I had met him. I, I mean, I ended up meeting him before I met her. Uh, I wanted to find someone who was adept, someone who knew about the law, someone who could help me not only navigate the current law, but fix some of the problems I was encountering, which I was un I was encountering a lot of unlawful stuff, but personally, personally, in while court, you were in family court. Okay. So I, I I needed some help, and Tom Clifford says, "Come on in." And he was a senator. No, he was legislative counsel. Oh, he was the what? attorney for the legislative assembly okay and he was Vanderbilt's boss as well as every other attorney who wrote laws for various committees right okay and you're looking for someone within the capital because you're dealing with family court and you're you're fighting for father's rights at the same time because of your experiences well, in Oregon I'm, I'm it's, it's not that I'm fighting for father's rights at that point, okay. uh, but <clears throat> I came to realize that fathers were getting a pretty short end of the stick. Bamboozled. Yeah. I ended up being known as a father's rights advocate. You came up to Oregon for your son, and you spent a lot of time at the Capitol getting to know how things work getting to know people who are lobbying up there. Kate Brown was lobbying up there. Um, Tom what? Clifford. Tom Clifford. He was like someone you really kind of connected with. He he connected with me, I think. I I knocked on his door but he said Come on in. And you know, and he he was feeling um, pretty anxious about the motor vehicle laws at that time because that the motor vehicle laws of Oregon were being revised in the early 80s, starting in 83. And in 85, uh, there was this huge 
scam that went down. Was this something that he himself was working on? I mean, so at the time that you met him, you're focused on family court and stuff that you're dealing with, and you're looking for someone within the capital who you can kind of go to, and he's dealing with something else? Yeah, he was, well, he was, he was admin, an administrator. He made sure that all of his staff attorneys were knocking out the bills, you know, in a timely manner, getting bill numbers on them before the date came that they had to have a bill number and all that kind of stuff. He didn't specifically work on a bill or a committee's bill. He was the administrator. And, but he was uh, really concerned about what was going on with the motor vehicle laws because he was responsible 